Hello and good afternoon friends. Welcome to CEC Edusat live lecture. Dear friends, in this session today we are going to talk about Indian monsoon and its environmental implication. And for this we have with us in our studios Dr. B. W. Pandey. Dr. Pandey is an uh, associate professor in Department of Geography, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. So I would like to tell you all that uh, Dr. Pandey has uh, authored various books uh, among which a few are Geo Environmental Hazards in Himalayas as well as in search of sustainability as well as uh, Dr. Pandey is executive of International Geoscience e uh, Education Organization. So first of all I would like to welcome our guest Dr. Pandey and I hope that the way he used to deliver his lecture with ample of examples which helps you a lot in studying your course material. I hope that this lecture also would be going to be uh, one of the finest lectures and you would be going to get deep insight into the topic that is the monsoons and how uh, Dr. Pandey has related the monsoons to the environment is an important issue. So taking you along towards the lecture I first of all welcome our guest Dr. Pandey. Dr. Pandey, Thank you, uh, welcome to the Edusate lecture. Thank you, Gitka. So, friends, I'm going to discuss uh, about lecture in two different groups. The first talk will be on Indian monsoon. Monsoon, its origin, its mechanism, its distribution, and the second part of the lecture will be its environmental implication. So what are the impact of monsoon on environment, Indian economy, Indian society? All over the framework I would like to discuss today throughout the discussion. Monsoon, first the term monsoon derived from Arabic word mausim. Mausim means Complete reversal of wind direction. Complete reversal of wind direction due to change in seasons. As you know, India is blessed of four geographical seasons. And that's very important. We feel like nowadays extremely, today extremely cold season, cold condition. And if you go to the month of May and June, extremely high temperature. So if you see the cycle, there is cycle of the weather conditions that is divided into four different geographical seasons. Keep in mind, this is geographical season, not the seasons of other Indian culture. These seasons known as cold weather season that begins from December, January, February, these three months, December to February called cold weather season in which temperature is low and consequently pressure, they call atmospheric pressure is high. So winds blow from high pressure to low pressure. So in this condition, in this weather, winds blow from Indian subcontinent to Indian Ocean. Then second weather season called hot weather season, summer season that begins from March, March, April and May. These three months, March, April and May, temperature keep on rising, say average temperature in the March in North India approximately say about 26 degrees Celsius. In the month of April it goes about 30 degrees Celsius and in the month of May average temperature goes about 39 to 40 degrees Celsius. So these uh, hot weather months, summer season, in real sense from geographical point of view this season is the real mechanism of the origin of the Indian monsoon. As temperature rises, pressure goes down. So temperature and pressure have inverse relationship. Higher the temperature, lower the pressure. Lower the temperature, higher the pressure. So temperature gradually 
right from March to May, uh, March to May, March, April, May, and gradually pressure goes down. The hot weather season is the season of mechanism of the origin of monsoon. Then the low pressure over Indian subcontinent in general, North India in particular, that low pressure develop low pressure trough. That low pressure attract the winds of the Indian Ocean where there is southern hemisphere reversed weather condition. So north hemisphere is summer season, then southern hemisphere have winter season and vice versa. So when temperature is high, pressure is low in north India. Temperature is low, pressure is high in Indian Ocean. So those winds which rush to Indian subcontinent, that is complete reversal. So during winter season, winds blow from northeast in India, from northeast, called northeasterly. Northeasterly are responsible for rainfall over the Coromandel coast, Tamil Nadu coast, Chennai coast. And complete reversal in summer season where winds blow from southwest. They are called southwesterly. So if you see, there is complete reversal of wind direction from northeast to southwest. The direction, direction of the movement of the winds responsible for onset and offset of rainfall in India, monsoon in India. So, southwest monsoon. So, when winds blowing from south and during winter season, winds blow from northeast. So, this is complete reversal of wind direction. Friends, I would like to tell you that in the other part of the world, Nowhere in the world you will find this typical condition of the monsoon. That is why India known as land of monsoon. In South Asia particularly they are called monsoon region covering Southeast Asia, Bangladesh and Indian subcontinent including the Sri Lanka. These uh, countries all together are the land of monsoon. Since India is the largest country in the monsoon region, therefore India is known as land of monsoon. I would like to tell you why other continents like North America, South America, Africa, Australia, these continents have also big size of land mass. But there is no monsoon. This is because of the interaction of the ocean and continent. India along with the Asia continent, Western Asia, Arabian Peninsula and Africa continent. See carefully, Africa Asia together called Afro-Asia. So Africa, Asia and in the east is Australia. If you see Indian, the northern part of Indian Ocean surrounded by Africa, Asia and Australia. These three land masses form Mahadesh. Mahadesh is typical Hindi word which means a mega landform, a mega landmass which surrounds Indian Ocean from three sides. In other words, you can say that northern 
part of Indian Ocean is surrounded by landmass, Mahadesh. So, head of the Indian Ocean, and there is extreme weather condition because of landmass. So, extremely high temperature on the landmass, extremely low pressure. On the other hand, ocean, the nature of the ocean, absorb the temperature. Consequently, the temperature of the ocean remain moderate throughout the year. You find least weather changes in the coastal areas because of maritime effect, effect of the ocean. Over landmass, the temperature which is affected by continent that is called extreme temperature and temperature affected by ocean called maritime temperature. So, extreme temperature, continental temperature, extreme condition over the continent, not in the ocean. Therefore, here I would like to explain you that it is the continental effect which is responsible for origin and mechanism of monsoon in South Asia. High temperature and low pressure in summer season and reverse in the winter, low temperature, high pressure. So, during summer when temperature is high, pressure is low, then winds attracted towards land mass from ocean to land and winter season land have extremely high pressure because of low temperature then winds blow from land to ocean. So, there is oscillation, oscillation from ocean to continent from continent to ocean. Observing these phenomena the Arabic geographers, they recognized and then the term, the coined the term mausim, from mausim the term monsoon. So, this is the literal meaning and explanation of monsoon. So, cold weather season, hot weather season, as soon as temperature crosses 40 degrees Celsius on average, pressure goes down below say 990 millibar. On the land mass pressure in millibar goes beyond 1020 millibar in winter season which create high pressure. In summer season millibars goes down to 990. Consequently, that reversed condition and extremely high temperature, low pressure, when it becomes low pressure trough, then comes third season that is popularly known as monsoon season. Advancing monsoon season begins from May. May goes up to June, July, August and early September. June to September there is effect of monsoon because during this season the temperature of the land is high, pressure is low. So, monsoon, monsoon begins in the June, gradually advances throughout the country. Therefore, it is called as advancing monsoon season. Right? On 31st May to 1st June, monsoon arrives in Kerala under Manicobar Islands. Then gradually advances to the interior of the country and by the end of July, monsoon covers entire India. This is called advancing monsoon. Then after the end of September, you know, 
sun is overhead on equator in September, 23rd September. And after September, sun moves to southern hemisphere. So gradually, where there is a sun, there is insulation, there is high temperature. So summer season shifts to southern hemisphere and cold weather season begins in northern hemisphere. Before cold weather season, that is the month of October and November. October and November, generally skies are clear. That insulation on the ground have more evaporation because lot of vegetation, lot of water on the land in the form of lakes, ponds, soil, subsoil, moisture due to temperature, it evaporates, evaporation from the water, from the soil, transpiration from the vegetation. That moisture plus gradually onset of the northeast winds, northeast trade winds. So northeast winds along with the moisture of the land, then it creates rainfall that is popularly known as retreating monsoon. Retreating monsoon from October to November. This way, after November, again becomes December and it is called cold weather season. So cold weather season, then hot weather season, then advancing monsoon season, and then retreating monsoon season. So India, Indian weather divided into four specific seasons. Every season have its own important, the monsoon. Today topic is monsoon. So monsoon season, now we'll come to monsoon. And first of all, I'd like to discuss its origin and mechanism. Regarding origin and mechanism of the monsoon, I do like to discuss there are four important theories of the monsoon, origin of the monsoon, those theories will give complete explanation of the origin of the monsoon. First theory, first theory known as thermal heat theory, thermal heat concept. There is a land mass, heavy, large size of land mass, extremely high temperature of the summer season, which creates low pressure. And due to low pressure, that arrival of southwest monsoon. So during summer season, hot land, lower pressure, on shore flow, rising air, precipitation. So hot, high temperature, and low pressure. This uh, theory was first propounded by Halley, Halley in 1686, Royal Geographical Society in which Halley had presented his thermal heat concept. Over focused over the temperature and it is the research of the Halley the thermal heat concept, thermal theory become very popular. And this was in the context of the South Asia, Indian Ocean. Halley found this condition not found anywhere in the world, in any continent, because of such typical geographical location of the head of the Indian Ocean, head of the Indian Ocean, and landmass, that landmass of the Afro-Asia, Australia. This landmass, due to high temperature, low pressure, winds blow from south to north, and winds of the southern hemisphere, winds of the southern hemisphere crossing, crossing equator affected by, affected by Coriolis force, 
and due to Coriolis force that winds turn right, turn right and that is south easterly becomes south westerly. It enters in India from southwest, therefore it is called southwesterly. This concept of the heli, the origin and mechanism of monsoon in India due to thermal effect, due to continental effect, extreme temperature of the continents. This is not found in other part of the world, though Australia have big size of land mass, Africa have big size of land mass, North America, South America, but there is no as such Mahades, mega land mass, which create continental effect, which is not found. Therefore, monsoon, monsoon mechanism, origin, distribution confined in the South Asia, in the Indian subcontinent. Second, second uh, geographer, climatologist who discovered that apart from the temperature, there is a mechanism of wind system. But wind system also affected by temperature and pressure. So, on the basis of heli, the fellow climatologist who developed the dynamic theory, a famous climatologist called Flon, Flon developed the dynamic theory that monsoon is not only the phenomenon of temperature, along with the temperature there is big impact of wind system. Students, friends you know very well there are different pressure belts on the earth, on the equator, equatorial low pressure. On the horse latitude area called subtropical area have subtropical high pressure. In the subpolar area have low pressure that is called subpolar low pressure and over the polar region have permanent high pressure that is called polar high pressure. So on equator, equatorial low pressure, so both sides of equator have subtropical high pressure. So, winds blow from subtropical high pressures from the north, from the south towards equator, equatorial low pressure. Due to movement of the wind affected by the rotation of the earth that is called Coriolis force developed by a scientist Coriolis called Coriolis force. Due to Coriolis force, winds of the northern hemisphere turn right, deflected right, winds of the southern hemisphere deflected left. This deflation right and the left creates easterly and westerly direction. Therefore, therefore it is general condition those winds blowing from subtropical high pressure towards equatorial low pressure, these winds called trade winds and trade winds are always easterly. Trade winds move from east to west. Due to movement from east to west, one can find very interesting thing in geography and this you can find in the atlas, you can see that in the tropical area, any continent in the tropical area, East coast is humid, evergreen forest, heavy rainfall and as you move towards west, western margin of the continents, these easterly winds become dry. Therefore, 
in the tropical regions, any continent in the world, in the tropical regions, you will always find desert. Say India, tropical country India, eastern part of India have very heavy rainfall, Cherapoji, Masiram, northeastern part of India, heavy rainfall. When you come to the western part of India, there is a desert, Thar desert. Similarly, Afro Asia, Mahadesh, eastern part of Asia continent, there is a heavy rainfall, monsoon land, evergreen forest. When you come to the west, there is a desert, right from Thar desert to Morocco desert. From Thar to Pakistan, Baluchistan region desert area, Afghanistan called Helmand desert, then uh, Arabian desert, Arabian desert that is called Rub al Khali desert area, Arabian desert, then you find Sahara desert. Similarly, in North America, western margin have desert, Sonoran desert, Mojave desert. On the west coast of the South America, we have Atacama desert. Entire, entire western part of Australia is desert. Great Sandy Desert, Gibson Desert, Great Victoria Desert, Simpson Desert, Tanami Desert, all in the western part of Australia. This is because of the direction of the trade winds, easterly. These winds, these winds are largely affected by the overhead location of the sun. As you know, we have different location of the sun on the earth. On equator, you know, twice in a year, on 21st March, 23rd September, sun is overhead on the equator. And 21st June, sun is overhead on Tropic of Cancer. And 22nd December, sun is overhead on the Tropic of Capricorn. Because of the different location of the sun, this is because of the revolution of the earth around the sun and its axis of the earth. It revolves in such a manner that the overhead position of the sun get changes on Capricorn to equator, equator to Tropic of Cancer, from Tropic of Cancer to equator again and they get back to the Capricorn. Due to change in the season, due to change in the position of the sun, there is change in the temperature, change in the wind system, change in the weather system, all because of the revolution of the earth. These, uh, because of these changes of different location of the sun, trade winds of the northern hemisphere, trade winds of the southern hemisphere, their length, their length decreases and increases. Here, it's, it's more mechanical. I'd like to explain a little detail. Listen carefully. Say, when sun on overhead on the equator, so the winds moving from 30 degree north, 30 degree south latitude to the equator, so both the trade winds of the northern hemisphere as well as in southern hemisphere, both the trade winds have same length. They are converging at the equator because equator have low pressure, equatorial low pressure. But now imagine when sun is overhead on tropic of Capricorn, then summer season on the Capricorn. North India, Asia continent have winter season. So winds of the northern hemisphere moving from 30 degree latitude to the equator then 
cross the equator and enter in southern hemisphere. There is thermal equator because thermal means overhead location of the sun. Where sun is overhead that is called thermal equator. Sun in the southern hemisphere therefore thermal equator separate to southern hemisphere. So winds of the northern hemisphere, trade winds of northern hemisphere cross the equator and enter in the southern hemisphere. So the length of the north trade winds, trade winds of northern hemisphere increases more lengthy and trade winds of southern hemisphere become short. So during month of September and March, sun is overhead on the equator. So thermal equator on the equator, thermal equator on the geometrical equator, geographical equator. Hence, trade winds of the both hemisphere converging at the equator, equatorial low pressure. So where the winds of the north hemisphere crossing tropic of cancer, winds of the southern hemisphere crossing tropic of Capricorn and converging at the equator. So the point, the place where these winds are converging popularly known as ITCZ, Intertropical Convergence Zone. So ITCZ is on the equator in the month of March and September, but ITCZ in the month of December shift to southern hemisphere because of the thermal equator in the southern hemisphere. Friends, so winds of the northern hemisphere enter in southern hemisphere and turn left due to Coriolis force. So ITCZ in southern hemisphere in that season, in that season you can see winds, winds moving from north, from northeast to southwest, therefore called northeasterly winds. These northeasterly winds passing through their land mass, that is a dry area. The dry area, dry land mass, dry land mass, dry area. Therefore, therefore, there is no rainfall. And winds passing the Bay of Bengal, passing through the Bay of Bengal, then crossing Bay of Bengal, then it enter in Indian subcontinent. Those winds are humid and give rainfall, give rainfall in the Kurumandal coast and along the other parts of the other parts of the Tamil Nadu and coastal Andhra Pradesh. Then in summer season when North India become extremely hot, the ITCZ shift towards north because the great northern plains, valleys of the Himalayas extremely heated up. Due to the heat, it becomes immense low pressure. Now, now another point I would like to highlight here, I would like to mention here another point, why there is shift of the ITCZ also. Friends, we have seen in the southern hemisphere when there was ITCZ, it was somewhere about 20 degree latitudes. But when ITCZ forms in the northern hemisphere, this ITCZ developed beyond 30 degree latitude. Beyond 30 degree latitude. This is again because of continental effect. This time, this time length of the southerly trade winds increases 
and length of the northerly trade winds become very short. So, intertropical convergence zone form over Tibet plateau, north of the Himalaya. This is the reason that rainfall which begin from Kanyakumari, from Andaman Nicobar, from Kerala coast, this rainfall goes up to entire Himalayan region, right from Arunachal Pradesh to Jammu Kashmir. Because that IT sees it from over Tibet plateau. So there is a complete reversal of the wind movement during, during winter season, winds blow from north to south across the equator, that is northern oscillation and during summer season, winds blow from south to north across the equator, that is southern, southern oscillation. Southern oscillation. Friends, southern oscillation is responsible for summer monsoon in India, in South Asia. It is southern oscillation which enter in Indian subcontinent as, as monsoon. That is, that's, the direction is southwest, therefore it is called southwest monsoon and also known as summer monsoon and as well as advancing monsoon. Then monsoon is a mechanism of the temperature, pressure, wind system. This argument, this theory, this discussion was presented by Flon. Another scientist called R. Serhag. R. Serhag had presented aerological theory. Aerological theory, he had supplemented apart from the thermal, apart from the dynamic means ITCZ theory, he had added apart from the ground, there is also role of upper atmospheric condition in the origin and mechanism of Indian monsoon. Upper atmospheric condition, he had discovered there is big size of anticyclone above the North India, covering North Indian states, Himalaya region, Tibet region, the big size of anticyclone. Due to that anticyclone, there develops a low pressure on the ground, means low pressure primarily developed due to high temperature, due to thermal effect. R. Serhag had incorporated that this thermal effect of the low pressure becomes low pressure trough due to upper atmospheric condition, due to, due to anticyclone in the upper part of the atmosphere. That low pressure becomes further low that form trough that is called low pressure trough. This low pressure trough is responsible for attraction of the winds from the south on the arrival of southwesterly winds as monsoon winds. Then finally, finally, in 1972, P. Koteswaram, P. Koteswaram, who had discovered the monsoon theory, that is called monsoon expedition theory, popularly known as Monex, in which, in which he has developed a new concept of the role of Tibet Plateau, role of Tibet Plateau on Indian monsoon. Friends, during summer season, Tibet Plateau become warm, it's hot. Due to the in high temperature of Tibet Plateau, the ground of Tibet Plateau become low pressure, while in the upper part of the atmosphere over Tibet Plateau, it develops high pressure as anticyclone. 
this anticyclone helps this anticyclone helps of the of the westerlies that is atmospheric westerlies called jet streams jet streams and they due to effect of the birth plate to their develop easterly jet stream that easterly jet stream is responsible for the monsoon rainfall in the eastern part of peninsula during summer season during summer season rainfall in the in the southern part of india occur due to due to easterly jet stream this easterly jet stream bring bring monsoon in the eastern part of peninsula this way the four theories of the monsoon give a detailed explanation of the origin and mechanism of monsoon so thermal heat theory dynamic theory aerological theory and monex friends now i do like to take you another important part of the monsoon that is that is popularly known as el nino el nino effect friends definitely you might have heard about the el nino el nino effect monsoon of india monsoon of south asia are largely affected by el nino condition el nino drought season dryness the the year which is el nino year there is a drought in india and here i do like to explain in detail about the el nino listen carefully and see the diagram you can find the hadley cell walker cell develop the different pressure conditions over the ocean and mainly mainly the specific condition i would like to mention the pacific ocean friends in the pacific ocean there there develop the high pressure in the eastern part of the pacific and low pressure in the western part of the pacific this is normal condition this is normal condition there is a high pressure in the eastern part of the pacific and and low pressure in the western part of the pacific this condition this condition is responsible for el nino condition how the el nino condition develop now see in this map large large amount of warm water accumulates along the west pacific region while eastern part of the pacific there is a lower size of cold water friends this is normal condition this is very good condition for monsoon in india due to trade winds as you know i have discussed trade winds are easterly due to easterly effect of the trade winds warm water of the equator warm water of the equator pushed from eastern part of the pacific to the western part it gets accumulated along the japan coast china coast australia coast that is the western part of pacific means eastern part of asia this is very good condition because when when the southwest monsoon enter enter in india that warm water of the west pacific 
creates a mega low pressure. That low pressure further further attract the southwest monsoon and that year monsoon become very active, very active. So it is very positive for Indian monsoon. But on the other hand, there is ocean water circulation. Due to ocean water circulation, the, there is a period between 5 to 7 years. During the period between 5 to 7 years, there is a reversed condition. Reversed condition means where the water, water, cold water of the East Pacific moves to the West Pacific and the warm water of the West Pacific moves to the East Pacific. Then on the West Pacific, there develop a high pressure. That high pressure object, it creates barrier. It's obstacle in the southern oscillation. The southwest monsoon becomes weak or it fails. So failure of the southwest monsoon means failure of the monsoon. No rainfall. That that is that is called drought. That is called El Nino. That is El Nino. And its reverse condition when condition is opposite in the east pacific have cold west pacific have warm there is excessive rainfall that is normal condition so the el nino el nino is the is the responsible for drought in india so drought called el nino in india now as you know monsoon monsoon in india is a Major factor will determine the Indian economy, Indian culture, Indian society. Ecology, economy, society of India all depends on monsoon. In fact, if you see broadly, monsoon is the finance minister of India. If monsoon is active, so we have bumper crops. Lot of industrial crops. So that support industry, trade, so economy goes up. But if there is El Nino, if there is a failure of monsoon, means then, then there is a drought. No industrial crop, no food grains. That has badly impact on Indian economy. Similarly, Indian society, different culture of India based on monsoon. Friends, if you go to the northeastern India, as soon as monsoon begins, there is beginning of the Kharif season. So agriculture season coincided with weather season. Kharif season means monsoon season. So entire eastern part of India, east of the 100 centimeter ISO height line, have rice dominating area because of monsoon. And different cultures like Bihu, you go to the northeast, have Bihu, a dance in the rice field, in the paidi field. Come to the rest part of North India, in the UP, Bihar, Bengal, as soon as monsoon begins, there is Kajari. There are lot of folk dance in month of Savan, lot of cultural festivals in the, in the monsoon season. So monsoon determine different Indian cultures. <coughs> Sorry. Apart from economy, apart from culture, monsoon have also different kinds of implications. Friends, I would like to mention here, monsoon is a boon for India. On other hand, you see the picture, on other hand, monsoon is a curse. Because of monsoon, there are large scale disaster. Disaster. You can recognize the June 2013 in Uttarakhand. 
This is because of that cloudburst of the monsoon. Thousands of the families, the houses, lock up the hectare fertile agricultural land in the valley, washed away. Disaster. So water related disaster means monsoon related disaster. So more water, flood, and less water is a drought. So floods and droughts, both are associated with monsoon. Floods have maximum impact on Indian economy in terms of loss of value. Flood is the largest disaster of India. In terms of total area, drought is the largest disaster of India. So floods and droughts both are based on monsoon. You can say Indian economy, Indian agriculture based on the mercy of the monsoon. Then during monsoon and the post monsoon find lot of monsoon water borne diseases. Water borne diseases, different typhoid, cholera, hepatitis, diarrhea, there are so many malaria and all that. And there is a high book of dengue and chikungunya in North India. Sometimes we go back, see, I remember in 1996, 2005, there were no beds in the hospital, such a large number of patients of the dengue and chikungunya. We have lost thousands of the lives every year because of dengue. These are all concerned with monsoon. Then a number of waterborne diseases in the body, skin, and because of the impact of the post monsoon, there is a breeding condition of the, of the mosquitoes. So monsoon, monsoon, which affect the, the Indian economy, Indian culture, Indian society, and also the disasters in India are largely based on monsoon, either floods or droughts, or cloud burst, all these phenomena concerned with the monsoon. These are the topics I like to mention with you. Thank you very much, Father. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much uh, for delivering such a nice lecture. You not only uh, put forward the advantages part of the monsoons, but also the disadvantages part. Uh, likewise, uh, as you uh, explained the cultural, economical, as well as the environmental aspect of monsoon, as well as we say the agriculture is the backbone of the country yes. called India. And we could say that the uh, monsoon or the water is the backbone of the agriculture. Uh, but in many cases, we have find that excess of monsoon or excess of water uh, give rise to many natural calamities such as uh, floods. Uh, now the question arises, uh, does these uh, uh, monsoons are responsible for the uh, climatic imbalance? Yes. See, there is a, nowadays, that is a separate topic I will discuss some other day called climate change. So climate change and there is a phenomenon of the climate change right from the prehistoric period. There are so many factors responsible for climate change. I will discuss in detail in, in other lecture. But nowadays you can see there is a irregularities, irregularities, anomalies in monsoon. The places which had earlier have heavy rainfall, those places gradually become dry, having average less rainfall. And the other places which were drought, less rainfall, scanty rainfall, nowadays getting more rainfall. For instance, I'd like to say to you, say eastern part of India is humid. But since many years, say several decades, 
the research has been done, you can found a place called Kalahandi in Odisha. Eastern part of India is a drought affected area. While in many parts of Rajasthan, where there is a dry, since last decades, there is excessive rainfall. If you see the average rainfall, more in Rajasthan, if you compare the last 50 years, 60 years, there is more rainfall. And it has been found that agroclimatic regions in Rajasthan, humid region shifting towards west, this is because of anomaly of monsoon. Yeah. This is the reason which you gave to us as you explained <coughs> that in future lectures uh, we would be definitely um, studying or uh, talking about the uh, distribution of rainfall in the various yeah. parts of the country. Uh, as you yourself mentioned uh, that uh, various irregularities could be seen when we talk about um, a monsoon uh, or if we talk about the uh, rainfall. Uh, yes. Sometimes uh, way back we used to um, study in the books uh, yes. uh, that Chera Punji is the place where we used to get the highest yes. rainfall but now uh, the place has been changed that Masin is Ram. yes exactly yes. the place has yeah. been changed uh, and what are the irregularities behind that what are the reasons behind that that would we would be discussing in the future lectures uh, sir uh, global wa uh, global warming is the most talked um, uh, topic now nowadays yeah. does it has any uh, contact or uh, any connection with the monsoons yes because of the impact of the global warming the natural phenomena the natural setup which I discussed the, the relationship between the temperature of northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere will be affected. So if the natural setup of the thermal belts, natural setup of the pressure belts will be affected, definitely there will be a massive impact on the monsoon, the distribution of monsoon, arrival of monsoon and the retreating of monsoon all these systems will be largely affected by the global warming if temperature rise up temperature like which is going on since last 50 years 100 years if it is continued then definitely in the future there will be a different monsoon theory due to global warming Definitely, sir. You have related very well the geographical aspects of the country or the geographical aspects uh, with the environment. I hope that in future lectures, in future sessions also, we would be discussing more and more uh, so that uh, the students could be benefited. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. Thank you.